Freedom of speech is supposedly the cornerstone of democracy and human rights, a powerful tool that can change the course of history, propel a civilization forward, or be used to annoy people on the internet. But what are the limits of this idea? Should your enemies be granted freedom of speech if they will use it against you? Are there words that should never be spoken as they are just too offensive? Should people that like children a little too much be allowed to try and convince others that this behavior is okay? Today we will be looking at a man who pushes the boundaries of freedom of speech everywhere he goes and learning the lesson that when people use their freedom of speech to tell you who they are maybe you should listen this is the Amos Yi story Ooh, interesting Amos Yi Pang Sang was born on the 31st of October 1998 in Singapore. He was raised as a Catholic with him being named after the prophet Amos and as a young child he would embrace Catholicism, attending mass independently of his family. Amos was a creative youngster who loved the YouTuber the angry video game nerd. So his parents brought him a video camera and he tried to emulate his YouTube hero. The angry video game nerd had showed him that he could make good quality videos by himself so that's what he started to do. In 2011 Amos would enter a local film festival being held by a newspaper. His short film titled Jan was about a girl with a terminal illness and Amos would play every part as a group of children who would discuss whether they wanted to help Jan or not. The climax being them all getting shot with a ukulele. We just have to raise $500,000 before it's too late. I believe this request is simply absurd for us diminutive kids to try to comprehend. This short film was praised as a twisted dark comedy with Amos winning the Best Actor and Best Short Film Awards, a new video camera and editing software being his prize. The film festival wasn't a youth competition so Amos had beaten hundreds of well seasoned fully grown adults, which meant that he was now regarded as a child prodigy of sorts. Honestly I didn't think his short film was very good but I'm not a film critic so what do I know? I did read somewhere that maybe he was given the win as having a 13 year old win would bring attention to the film festival. The chief judge for the competition was a movie director named Jack Neo who would take Amos under his wing and offer him an internship. He also cast him in a movie called We Not Naughty in which Yi would improvise and improve the script for his part and Neo would say that Amos was a critical part of the movie. Amos was again heaped with praise for his part in the movie but during the press conference he would say that the editing for the movie was done poorly and the movie was very confusing. The director Jack Neo would try to play this off by saying, just because Yi acts arrogant doesn't mean he is. He is an actor. He is playing a role. Spoiler alert, this is incorrect. Amos was now starting to show his true colours and foreshadowing his outspoken nature, a nature that would come to plague him in the not too distant future. But before we get onto that, he appeared in an advert that I kind of love more than I should. Are the nuggets really good? Yeah, I really love the nuggets here. It's spicy and they contain like seven different peppers, seasoning spices. So that's what I'm really here for. Oh, so you like spicy food? Yeah, of course. Well, well, you can spice me up anytime. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a number? Amos would start to turn his attention to YouTube more and more as this gave him an outlet to speak his mind. He really loves to speak his mind. In one video, he would disrespect the Chinese New Year by claiming that it was just a rip-off of the Western New Year. The people of Singapore didn't seem to like this very much and the video would get comments such as Such disrespect. Know your roots, brat. If not, read up before you make such a video. I did try to do a Singapore accent for that, but it really didn't work out too well. Anyway, this video would make news headlines and pave the way for the road that Amos would choose to walk. Amos would also start to fall down the atheist rabbit hole with him stating that the biggest influence on him was TJ Kirk otherwise known as the amazing atheist probably not the best role model for a child to be honest Amos would watch many amazing atheist videos and was convinced to leave Christianity and embrace the intellectual rational world of atheism this was only further cemented when he was talking to his priest about this but was thrown out of the church for swearing after watching a video by the amazing atheist on how pointless school was and how it was just like religion. Amos started to question why he was wasting his time at school so dropped out just a few days before his final test. Amos was now sure that at the age of 16 he knew better than everyone else and he was the enlightened being.
being who could see clearly while everyone around him was blinded by dogmatic thinking. It's a bold strategy. Let's see how it works out for him. Lee Kuan Yew is the first Prime Minister of Singapore and is recognised as the founding father of the modern state of Singapore. He would sadly die in 2015 and five days after his death our little buddy Amos would post a video titled Lee Kuan Yew is finally dead. As you can no doubt guess, this video wasn't very kind to the recently deceased founder of Singapore. In this video, Amos claimed that Lee was a dictator who created fear. He also compared Lee to Jesus, which at first sounds like a compliment, but he then went on to say that both were power hungry but pretended to be kind. Amos then went on to insult both the followers of Lee and Christians, then claimed that the government of Singapore was corrupt. Lee Kuan Yew was a horrible person. Because everyone is scared. Everyone is afraid that if they say something like that, they might get into trouble, which give Lee Kuan Yew credit, that was primarily the impact of his legacy. But I'm not afraid. So if Lee Sien Long wishes to sue me, I will oblige to dance with him. Lee Kuan Yew seems to have been much loved in Singapore as this sparked outrage. Amos would get death threats and many people reporting him to the police. Even his own mother reported him to the police for this video. It seems that many people were blaming his parents for his behaviour so his mother reporting him to the police seems to have been a way to appease the mob and she states that she feared for his safety. The outrage didn't stop there though. The second minister for foreign affairs is quoted to say, it's not just any YouTube video. I I think it was a YouTube video that crossed the red line on religion. And the Prime Minister of Singapore is quoted to say, Governing authorities are open to criticism, but that the ability to exercise the freedom of expression comes with limits. Amos had hit the provocateur jackpot, so he followed it up by posting a drawing of Lee Kuan Yew engaged in an indecent act with former British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. How dare you sir, I'll have you know that Margaret Thatcher is a national treasure. Two days after posting his video, Amos was arrested for deliberate intention of wounding the religious or racial feelings, threatening, abusive or insulting communications, and obscenity. His arrest would spark outrage, but this time it was from the Western world. Amos spoke like an American and was saying things that people in the West take for granted, so this was seen as an affront to the sensibilities of the West. The New Yorker is quoted to say, Yee's arrest doesn't just underscore his complaints about Singapore's backwardness on rights and freedom. It shows the country's dire need for cultural education through intelligent dissent. Something to be aware of when viewing the laws in Singapore is the history of this small city-state. This island was inhabited by about a thousand people for most of its history until the British Empire turned it into a trading hub and immigrants began to flood in mostly from China but also other parts of Malaysia. Skipping forward and the island was taken by the Japanese in the Second World War in what is considered by many as the worst military defeat in British history. After the Japanese surrendered and the Second World War came to an end, the infrastructure of Singapore had been left in ruins and the country fell into chaos. As time passed, the island was rebuilt and in 1963 it was given independence from Britain, becoming part of Malaysia, but this didn't last long due to political differences and in 1965 Singapore became a sovereign state. Then in 1969, the island would be overwhelmed with race riots which left 196 people dead. These riots happened when ethnic tensions between the Chinese and Malaysian people on the island erupted into violence. All this is just a long-winded way of me saying that Singapore is a multicultural state with lots of ethnic and religious interests that need to be balanced, which is why these laws came into existence. Anyway, back to the story. Amos was released on bow and told that he could not go on to the internet. Amos's father would then address the Prime Minister and say that he was sorry. Amos is not one to follow the rules so he went onto the internet and asked people to help with his legal costs. He also posted links to his video and drawing of Lee Kuan Yew and Margaret Thatcher. He was arrested again and put in prison for four days but was bowed out by a stranger named Vincent Law. Vincent Law is an odd part of this story so let's get to know him a little better. Vincent is a family man, youth counsellor and 
and a Christian. He stated that he was not offended by the things that Amos said and that he believes in free speech, which is why he decided to help Amos. As we will see as the story goes on, helping Amos never works out well for the Good Samaritans. But I guess at this stage, no one really knew what kind of person Amos was. So many people would join his cause and he even had three lawyers offer to represent him pro bono. The eyes of the West were upon him and Amos was doing all that he could to be the victim they craved. He was helped further when a man slapped him outside of the court in full view of the world's press. The man who slapped him said that he did this in an effort to instill fear into Amos and sort out his attitude. The happy slapper was given three weeks in prison. Eight days after being released, Amos would post blogs about how silly his bowel conditions were and accuse his father of physically abusing him. So he was sent back to prison. Vincent Law would offer to pay his bail again but Amos refused as he didn't want to be silenced. The courts would offer him opportunities to go free such as taking down his blog posts but Amos saw this as an admission of guilt so refused. Amos was also offered release if he reported to a police station daily and went for psychiatric counselling but again he refused and decided to remain in prison. On the 7th of May 2015 the trial began and Vincent Law turned up to show his moral support for Yi. Amos's defence would argue that the video was meant to critique Christianity and Lee Kuan Yew to open discussions on what he saw as problems with the faith and Singapore. The Wall Street Journal would write, This trial shows Singapore's struggle to adapt its tradition of censorship to the realities of the digital era. After a short trial, Amos was found guilty and given bail while he awaited sentencing. He was ordered to remove the posts from the internet, which he did, but I'm sure that you can guess that Amos didn't stick to this and nine days later he made them public again. The more games that Amos played, the more attention he would get with Human Rights Watch stating, publicly punishing a youthful dissident who dared to besmirch the image of the recently passed leader and intimidating anyone else who might think of doing the same in the future and Amnesty International declaring him a prisoner of conscience. While awaiting sentencing, Amos would write a Facebook post that should have started to ring alarm bells for anyone supporting him but largely seems to have flown under the radar. In this post, he would accuse Vincent Law of mal- him. The stranger who offered him support and bowed him out denied these claims stating that he only met Amos four times and each time they were in public places. Amos then said that these accusations were not true but Mr Law was creepy. Vincent Law then threatened to sue Amos if he didn't do a public apology so Amos said that he was extremely remorseful for the turmoil and Mr Law dropped the suit. The lawsuit. I hate myself. Amos then retracted his apology and wrote an expose about how law m***ed him emotionally and claimed that because the word m***ed can mean a few different things, his statement wasn't untrue. He also said that Law's stupid religious mindset was the only reason that he thought that Amos would ever apologise for real. Mr Law wisely decided to just ignore Amos from that point forward. Amos being the humble person that he is then posted to Facebook comparing himself to Gandhi and Nelson Mandela claiming that he was a martyr for free speech. The judge in the court case then remanded Amos to a mental health institute for two weeks. Probably not a bad idea really. The night before he was sentenced, Amos was taken to hospital for low blood glucose due to him not eating or sleeping. This didn't stop the sentencing though and he was given four weeks in prison but due to time already served, he was free to go. All through the trial, Amos was known in Singapore for a smirk that he would always have on his face. But after he was released from the courts, he now had a sad, somewhat worried look on his face, which the Western press would pick up on. Amnesty International said, saying that this was a dark day for freedom of expression. The attention wasn't just coming from the West though and many protests began to break out over Asia with some of them burning images of Lee Kuan Yew. On a side note, Amos's mother would later say that the sad look on his face was fake and that when he got into the car he was smiling and acting as if nothing had happened. Amos was now a hero for free speech all around the world. A young man taking on an unjust system, unflinching, uncompromised 
compromising, a martyr willing to go to prison for what he believes in. Amos now knew what people wanted and he was more than willing to give it to them. On the 27th of November 2015, Amos would post a reply to someone in which he insulted Islam and again he was arrested. On the 29th of September 2016, he was sentenced to six weeks in prison and fined $2,000 for wounding religious feelings. This would again bring attention to Amos and his YouTube channel had began to grow to the point where he could now make a living from this. Sadly for Amos, he had a big problem approaching that he needed to escape from. He was soon to be 18 years old and in Singapore this means that he would need to serve two years mandatory military service. Amos had chosen the correct time to make a stand for free speech as this was the same time that free speech was a big talking point on the internet. Melissa Chen is a free speech activist who was born in Singapore but now lives in America. She would take up Amos's case, being his champion, arranging interviews with people like the Rubin Report. These communications with high profile people would give Amos an idea. He should seek asylum in the USA. This would fix all of his problems and offer him the free speech speech that he so dearly longed for. Amos made friends with a lady named Nina Paley who lived in America. She offered him a place to stay in her boyfriend's home if Amos ever made it to the USA so a GoFundMe was set up and Melissa Chen went out to visit him while he was under house arrest in Singapore to arrange the details. A big push was made to get Amos to the USA so that he could escape his tyranny and in December 2016 he would fly to China where he would catch a flight to America. Upon a arrival in the USA he was interrogated at the airport and disclosed that he wished to seek asylum in the country. He was then detained and put into an immigration centre while his application was processed. While at the centre Amos was given a psychological assessment and diagnosed as a narcissist. Not a big surprise to be honest. In total he would spend 11 months at the immigration centre where he would pass the time by playing chess. Amos would get much help from his new American free speech friends and his human rights lawyer would argue to the court that he would be persecuted in his homeland. This wasn't a very difficult thing to prove given how public his trial was and how much attention he had drawn to himself. Amos won the court case and was released. He now had the ability to apply to be a full citizen of the USA after a year had passed. All he had to do was keep his nose clean. He was further incentivized by the fact that missing his compulsory military service made him what is known as a defaulter, a crime that carries a prison sentence of 36 months and a fine of up to $10,000 if he ever returned to Singapore. Amos was again in the news for his asylum bid with Reuters reporting that Yi was critical of the US foreign policy and quoting him to say, it is not going to the best country, this is about going to the country that most effectively promotes my political philosophy of anarcho-communism and ending private property and wage labour. This is a point that never seems to get brought up when I hear people talking about Amos Yi. He is very far down the communism rabbit hole and pretty much all of the people in America who helped him into the USA are right wing people. Helping your political enemies get asylum in your country is a bold strategy. Let's see how it works out for them. Amos went to live with Nina Paley's boyfriend and things were looking good for him. He was now able to say what he wanted. He had a growing YouTube channel, all of the free speech YouTubers on his side and he was getting booked to give speeches in real life. One of these speeches was at the prestigious University of Harvard where he was due to give a talk titled Jowled for Dissent. He was the darling of the freedom loving right wing and had the world at his feet so he decided to do the only logical thing that someone in his position could do. In 2016 he posted a video titled Why a Child fee should be legal. It's a bold strategy, let's see how it works out for him. He would then upload more and more of this kind of content, trying to justify the unjustifiable. Soon word got around that Amos had taken a new direction in life, so one of the events that he was due to speak at contacted him in an attempt to get him to retract his statements, but he refused. So they would cancel his invite and post this statement. Moments ago, we spoke to Amos Yee directly about our concerns regarding 
regarding some of his tweets. Amos made it clear that he will not retract his previous statements. We were not initially aware of these statements, but our community called our attention to them. Mifcon does support exploration of a wide array of ideas. However, his views regarding the potential of children lie on the fringes of culture and political thought and will not further the goals of MIFCON. We support his right to free speech but cannot support his participation in our event as an attendee. Hence Amos is no longer invited to attend the conference. The criticisms we received for Yee's attendance online did cause us to look into his views further and we don't feel he is a good fit for MIFCON. Amos didn't take this lying down though and tried to sneak into the event but was found out and escorted off the premises. Then 24 hours before he was due to speak at Harvard this talk was also cancelled. Amos had in a very short time found the limits of free speech in America and was very outspoken about how hypocritical the free speech activists in his new home were. Amos was undeterred by these setbacks and made many more videos about this topic, comparing child admirers to having the same struggles as black people or gay people in America. This newfound love would start to get a lot of pushback so he would make a video comparing the skeptic community to the people of Singapore claiming that they are both closed minded. At this stage it seems that most of his free speech friends thought that Amos was just trolling or being edgy, trying to push the boundaries. He himself would claim that he has never been a troll and that he is just talking talking about these things as an intellectual endeavour. He would also, from time to time, argue that it was okay to have relationships with animals and family members as you do. Perfectly normal intellectual endeavours. Not everyone took this as edgy internet posting though and child protective services were called on him. You see Amos was living with the boyfriend of Nina Paley. This man also had foster kids living in the same home so as you can imagine Amos was asked to move out. He was now homeless and ended up sleeping on a couch owned by modern day hippies as he puts it. Amos still had his internet career so had money coming in and eventually moved to Chicago where he would just keep posting the same kind of content. This topic seems very important to him. I wonder why. He would start to do debates on this topic with well-known internet personalities, none of which went very well for him if I'm honest. His position is a very difficult one to argue for and also he just wasn't very good at it. Watching these debates it becomes very clear that Amos is not as intelligent as he thinks he is so he is always on the losing side. In case you were wondering, Amos lost his virginity at age 19 to a 22 year old. I'm just going to throw that out there, I didn't really know where else to put it. I'm sure that most of you wouldn't be able to sleep tonight unless you found that out. In 2018 his YouTube channel was demonetized after CNN did a report about the extremist channels that were on the website and were being allowed to show ads. Amos's channel was featured in this report and after the Toy Industry Association pulled ads from YouTube Amos's channel was removed. A short time later he would also lose his Facebook, Twitter and Patreon accounts. The internet was his main source of income so this was a big blow for him but Amos had a real passion for this this topic so he would continue to post in whatever corner of the internet that he could. It was around this time that most people started to realise that maybe this isn't just some edgy guy on the internet trying to push the boundaries but an activist trying to normalise things that shouldn't be normalised. His once allies started to distance themselves from him with Melissa Chen, the person who facilitated Amos entering the USA calling for him to be deported. I'm not sure why I found this little detail so funny really. Amos now found himself in a strange land with no money and no friends. Well, there was one community that now loved him I guess. Amos had been banished to the shadow realm, the dark seedy places of the internet, so he set up a discord server that would advocate for pro contact. I'll be honest I don't know what this means and I really don't want to look into it, but I would guess that it means doing stuff in real life rather than just talking about it on the internet. The story would then go around Twitter which was posted by a 14 year old girl who claimed that Amos and her exchanged indecent images. She would post videos of a chat room in which he begged for photos many times and 
and posted photos of him that he had sent to her. This would largely go unnoticed as most people had already forgotten about Amos since he was cancelled and the big creators that had supported him just wanted to brush their association with him under the rug. Amos would change his online name to Kino and do a live stream on someone else's channel in which he said that the allegations are just rumours. He would then start a blog under the name Polycle which is a combination of polymath and oracle. On this blog he would claim to be a child prodigy. Narcissism coming on nicely I see. This blog was as you would expect from Amos at this point. The guy really has a passion for this topic. In October 2020 Amos Yee was arrested for exchanging photos with a 14 year old girl. I would guess that this is the same one from Twitter but it's not confirmed. In the court case Amos would plead not guilty and claim that he was just trolling on the internet. An interesting detail that I think shines a light on the type of person that Amos is. During the court case Amos would interrupt the proceedings so much that his public defender is quoted to say just keep your mouth shut. Amos would then go on to take a plea deal for a sentence of six years in prison. He was also warned that he may be deported back to Singapore where he would face charges as a defaulter. Due to time already served and parole Amos was released two years after he was sentenced and in October 2023 he was put into a home share with other people like him. While in this home he would start a blog. It's a bold strategy, let's see how it works out for him. On this blog, he would continue to talk about the topic that he is so passionate about and state that he would break the law again if the opportunity arose with someone that he found attractive. He would also state that he plans to do an illegal protest to bring public attention to this topic. Unsurprisingly, in November 2023, he was arrested again for violating his parole and sent back to prison. <laughs> Amos Yi is an interesting self-destructive character who seems intent on burning all bridges and betraying everyone that tries to help him. A man who can find the exact wrong thing to say in every society that he finds himself in. A man that overinflates his own ego and grasp on reality. And a man who only really cares about himself. I honestly think that Amos truly sees himself as some kind of freedom fighter. An enlightened being that the rest of us just don't understand. And in the years to come we will catch catch up and history will remember him as the good guy. His story does raise some interesting questions though. For most of my adult life I've only seen freedom of speech as a good thing but now I'm not so sure. It seems to me that freedom of speech can only exist in an ideologically homogenous society where everyone agrees that it is an important ideal. Whether we like it or not words and ideas are powerful things and being so frivolous with them may not be wise. The western world is now divided into a few different competing ideologies trying to assert dominance over each other with some realizing that it's a silly idea to allow your competition to propagate their ideas while others seem intent on holding freedom of speech as the highest virtue to the bitter end i guess only time will tell which one of these competing factions will come out on top my guess would be that sooner or later everyone will realize that restricting speech is a necessary step on the path to victory which will be rubbish as my speech is already restricted enough but in the battleground for ideas words are the most powerful weapon and he who does not use the weapons at his disposal is destined to lose i'm not saying that i particularly like this more it's just a prediction of what i think is to come i change my mind on pretty much a weekly basis though so don't hold me to this in the future there is a funny interview that i came across while researching this video amos was interviewed by someone called jesse lee peterson who is an american conservative and the clash of ideas between the two i found pretty funny i don't know much about jesse lee Peterson. So if any of you guys follow him and could answer whether he's trolling or not, I honestly couldn't really make out if he was. Sometimes he seemed pretty sincere and other times he seems like he was just saying stuff to get a reaction. Anyway, as things stand, Amos Yee is due to be released from prison in April 2025. It is unclear at this stage if he will be sent back to Singapore to face charges as a defaulter or stay in the good old US of A. Wherever he ends up, let's hope that he stays away from kids. I'm going to have to keep up with you. You're very interesting. Oh, thank you. At 19. Sure. Very interesting. Yeah, uh, many people have said that. Thank you. I'm going to have to keep up with you to see what happens to you when you're 18 and when you're 20. And when oh, you're... yeah. <laughs> That's what many people say. They're very curious how I'll, I'll yeah. turn up. Like, like, 
you know, a revolutionary or like a complete bum. Watch this video about the man, the myth, the legend, Sam Hyde. If you like this video, then like the like button. If you didn't like it, then why are you still watching, you weirdo? A big thanks to the channel members and the Patreons, and bye bye Do you know that I call him the Great White Hope? <laughs>